Hey there, this is Cam. I'm from the Coco Studio X team. Today, I'm going to show you a new tool, the Coco's Code IDE. It is an IDE based on the Eclipse, which is prepared for the Coco Studio X Lua or Coco Studio JS developers. You can find it in our homepage inside the products here. In this page, it shows some features of the Cocos Code IDE, and I will demonstrate them later. So let's download it here. You may see there are a lot of versions. Today I will choose the Mac one, but if you choose the Windows, pay attention that you need to pick the one match your JDK versions of your system, 32 or 64 bits. So let's get started. I just cut the downloading part to save the time, so drag it into my applications. Okay. Here we go. This window asks you to select your workspace and I will choose my own. Be careful of your path. The Cocos Code IDE project is not around any non OSCO characters in the path, so if you want to save your projects into your workspace, make sure your path follows this rule. Okay, create. Okay. Click here to remember your default workspace, then it won't ask you next time. OK. The first time you get in is a welcome page. It is separated to the JavaScript workspace and the Lua workspace. This demonstration will focus on the Lua, so I will choose the Lua. But the JS workspace is almost the same as the Lua so that I will not show it anymore. OK, let's get in. Again, since the first time you are required to set your Lua framework, that is our Cocos 2 dx engine. But remember that Cocos Code IDE supports Cocos 2 dx 3.0 above. That is very important. OK, I will choose the Cocos 2 dx 3.2. For JavaScript, there is a difference that you need to choose the Cocos 2D JS engine, also 3.0 above. Apply. OK. That is the basic layout of the Cocos Code IDE. The layout is very similar to the native Eclipse, except the tools bar above. You can switch the JS or Lua workspace in the right side. And the four tools on the left are the core functions of Cocos Code IDE. The first one is debug. It will debug Mac runtime by default. Next one is the configurations of your debug. I don't have any projects now, so I can do nothing with it. Let's see the next button. The next button is to run your runtime. And the last one can help you build other runtimes or package to APK or to IPA. Since the Cocos Code IDE is based on the Eclipse, you can also integrate many other plugins through the Eclipse the marketplace here. For example, I want to add the Android tools. Just uh, search the ADT here. ADT return. You can see it will result all the add ons related to the ADT, and you just need to install. That's one point. Now I will present how to create a new project. Right click in the Lua Project Explorer. You can find the Cocos Lua project inside the new options. Click it, and there's the window to create a new project. 
the project's name, then the project's path. Click here to create your project in the workspace. You can also choose to create from your existing resource by these options. And the working set can help you to add project to your own working group, but I don't have any sets now, so there is nothing to choose. Still, you can define a new working set through here. There is a new button. Okay, next. There, some, there are some runtime configurations. Landscape or portrait. And this part of options refer to the runtimes of the desktop, like your Mac or Win32 runtimes. The title is the title of the runtime window. This is the resolution of the desktop runtime. It has provided some common resolutions, and you can also custom it yourself. One thing should be talked about is this resolution doesn't mean the design resolutions of your games. It could only design the resolutions of your desktop Windows runtime. And add a native codes could help you add special game logic in native codes or third-party libraries or your Lua script binding codes and others. It's very useful, but I don't add it in this project right now. And I'm going to create two projects, one added and another one not, by comparing them to make you understand the usage of add native codes. Okay, finish. Here's the structure. Source contains your Lua codes, and the rest includes your resources. Config.json is the configuration file of the Cocos Code IDE project, and then is the Cocos 2DX and the Lua lib. Let's get inside the project's file directory. Right click the project, and you can see a easy show. Choose Explore. You can also find the config, the resource, and the source here. And there is a runtime folder. It has the runtimes of four platforms that have been compiled and packed. So if you have added a native code, it would add all of these runtimes native codes. Let's create a new project with added native codes to make this clear. New project. Cocos Lua Game 2. Next. Choose Add Native Codes and finish. There is no difference when we observe the structures of these two projects in the Explorer, but they have differences. We open the file of the second, the second project. Then we can see there is an there is a frameworks photo, and that is the native code. And we can see the Cocoa Studio X engine here, all of them, and the, the runtime source, like the iOS Mac project, and its classes. And let's see this. If you have experience of Cocos 2DX Lua development, you will be familiar with this because this Lua project is the one we used to create on Xcode. And in this project, you can do many things to modify the native code. You can add in your own C++ and modify the Cocos 2DX engines here. Add in some third-party libs or editing the binding codes. So many works you can do. That is the add native code. But if you need all of these actions you have done make sense to Cocos Code IDE, you will have to build and generate these runtimes in Cocos 2D, in Cocos Code IDE here. But if you still don't add a native runtime, the IDE will notice you before you build it. 
like the first project, we still don't add the native runtime. So it will ask us packaging the project needs adding native codes first. So let's add it. That means you don't have to add native codes at the beginning. This can be done whenever you want. Generate. Okay, it's complete. Uh, the build the build runtime window will come out automatically. And before but before we build it, let's check the file again. Then you can see the first project have generated the native codes as well. So now I pretend I have done few works through my iOS Mac project and I want to compile this work to my Mac runtime so I need to build the runtime so we back to the Cocos code IDE oh by the way you can also add native codes by right clicking the project and find this inside the Cocos tools this, there is add native code support you can also do this here so let's build it now Build Mac runtime, and if you if you would like to build the Android runtime, you would be asked to set your Android passes, your NDK, NDK, SDK, or end location. You can also find these settings in the preferences. So this work can be done whenever you want. Okay, generate. It will cost the appearance of time, so I would cut this part. So this window shows the Mac runtime build successfully. And I, I didn't choose the others runtime, so they will not build. And at this time, anything you have changed in your native code will appear in your Cocos code IDE. So this is the build runtime. And then we are going to see the code hinting of Coco's code IDE. And we choose uh, Lua file first, uh, the Lua's API. And I will type some reserve keywords local, local, okay. And return, okay. And I want a for loop. So. There are many templates of the four loops, and I choose the first one. Then it completed automatically. And next, I will try some Coco Studio X API. Like, I want to create a layer. The namespace, good. The layer class, good. And the create function okay well done and from RC1 we when we want to input some local resources Coco's code ID can detect and suggest the resource files for you and let's see these functions and so at first we need some resources and I will import our test Lua's to here And this time I choose create from existing resource. And uh, here the Lua test. Here are the resources. And I want to see the Grossini. Okay, you can see that the Cocos code IDE can read the plist files and search the corresponding part of the images. I think it's clear and easy for you to read this plist, and it has two layouts. When it comes to the codes, for example, I want to create a sprite, create a sprite from this Grossini, then
Now you can see. Now you can see the Cocos Code ID has showed all of the resources named with the GR named with the Grossini. And it also includes the information from the P list and its parts here. So it's very convenient. That is the code hinting and uh, auto completion for Cocos Code ID. Another point I want to tell you now is how to run the Lua test in the Cocos Code ID. You can see you can see the Lua test cannot run now. That is because the project doesn't contain the whole resources of the Lua test. So a part of the resources a part of the resources are in the CPP test. So I need to copy them to our project. So this is the Lua test. But this is not the whole resources. Some are here. Here. I copy this all of them. And that is not enough. I need to change the entry of Lua test in the config JSON. It's main Lua now, but actually it should be the controller for the Lua test. Okay, let's try again. Well done. And next is the debug tools of Cocos Code IDE. So let's back to the first project. And we close these two. And before we start to debug, let's see the configurations. So here is the first project. We can't see the others because I have closed them. And you can select the target platform and the default one is the Mac platform and this is the iOS and then the Android ADB mode and the remote debug allows you allows real device debug on iOS or Android you can also debug C++ with Lua with Lua side by side simulated simu Tenuously from Cocos Code IDE or maybe Visual Studio on Windows. So this is very powerful and I will present this later. And now we choose the Mac platform. Okay. Let's start to debug. It's down really fast. And this window is kept atop, but you can you don't have to just click here so you will go back and the signs is also can be rescaled through the view here and the first feature of the debug is the live coding and let's see this and I make it smaller and uh, And the live coding the can is able to make the live modifications to the game. Then you can see the real time results. So I will make a test. The the square row is moving slowly, and I want to move faster. So I find the code of the speed here. This code, this part of code, control the speed, and I change it from one to ten then save look the square row is moving faster immediately that is the live code and if I change the speed to zero no more change anymore and then 
the squirrel should stop like this. Then I want to see how to debug by breakpoints. And uh, I want to follow the change of the speed. So I breakpoint here. Okay, and you see this point was stopped here immediately. That is because of the mechanism of live coding, and uh, this part of code was running every frame, so it stopped without any seconds. And then we move to the debug window. This is no difference between the native Eclipse debug. The variables can be checked. Here, you just move the mouse to it, and you can you can debug step by step or other ways if you need it. So this is the normal debug of Cocos Code IDE. I won't talk too much with the normal type. And next is the cross-platform debugging. This kind of debugging makes it possible to debug from Lua on Cocos Code IDE to C++ on Xcode or Visual Studio. And so let's just stop this here. It's back to this. And the cross-platform debugging is based on the native runtime, so you need to start the native code runtime at first. And here I will run the Mac runtime. And you will cost you will spend a lot of time, so I will cut this part. So this is the Mac runtime on native code, and what we should do is to keep this running and back to the Cocos Code IDE. Then we need to change the debug mode to remote debug on Mac. Apply, and you don't have to change the default IP. Close. Let's make some breakpoints. I want to see how does the I want to see how does the preload effect work in C native code so and we make a break breakpoint in Lua a little just before the preload preload effect. Then we back to the Cocos code. Uh, we back to the X code. We search this function. Preload effect. Error. We find out the brick preload function and make a breakpoint inside the function. So let's debug again to see if this could work. It stopped. Then we come here, we debug step by step. Sorry, I didn't close the music. Let's go on. Here, pay attention. Okay, 
the breakpoint was gone and we back to the Xcode so you can see the break the breakpoint has stopped at the one we just set there and now you can able to check the preload function preload effect in C++ and here I just I pass it Okay. Then you can see it has back it to the Cocos code ID. So that is the cross platform debugging. So through this feature, you don't have to stop your debug because of the separation between Lua and C. Okay, let's see the next feature. And we just stop this debugging. Okay, let's see the one click publishing. The one click the one the publishing is in the Cocos tool here. We have package to APK or IPA. I will try the APK first. And you need to set your Android environment. SDK location. My SDK here. And ADK, NDK, and okay. Then you have two options to of keys to package. Um, this is for the debug key store, and this one is for the private key store. I don't have a private key, so. I will choose the debug one. Okay, generate. It still spend a lot of time. I will cut this one. Okay, this this dialog told me that my APK has been saved to this path successfully. And let's check. And you will see there is a publish file, and that is our APK. And this is packaged as a debug key. And uh, let's see the iOS one. Package to IPA is simple too. You just need to install your certificate, and then you select your certificate and generate. But I don't have one now, so I just can't do the test for you. But I believe you can do this yourself, it's easy. And the last feature is how to upgrade Cocos 2DX version in your Cocos Code IDE project. And to do this test, I need to set the Cocos 2DX to a lower version. The Cocos to the X 3.0. Okay, then I create a new project. And you can see this one is a Cocos to the X 3.0 project. And I want to upgrade it to the Cocos to the X 3.2. So right click the project. Inside the Cocos tools, there is an upgrade option. Oh, sorry, before do this, I need to change the Cocos 2DX back to the Cocos 2DX 3.2. I need a higher one now. Okay, then we can do this. And we select the entry of the new project is the main load main lua finish so we can see this one has been transformed to the cocos 2dx 3.2 but this upgrade couldn't help you to modify the change of cocos 2dx api you need to 
find the difference and do this yourself. That is your work. Okay, this is the whole introduce of the Google's code ID today. I hope this ID could help you. And if you have any opinions or questions, please tell us. You can create a new topic in our forum. Thank you for your listening, and I will see you next time.